you all uh, welcome to workshop technology subject today we are going to discuss about the metal casting operations okay metal casting operations one of the main uh, manufacturing method uh, and also one of the oldest manufacturing method to manufacture uh, metal component okay basically in uh, casting operations what happen solid metal heated to become molten steel then this uh, molten metal uh, poured to a cavity having the required shape so then they allow to solidify then after the uh, product solidify then the part can take out from the mold okay then the required desired shape uh, we can obtain in this method okay the already you have uh, we have we discussed about the uh, metal cutting operation it's also a manufacturing method in uh, metal cutting operation what happen unwanted material we are removing to obtain the desired shape required shape and the dimensions but in here what happen the mortar metal poured into a cavity the cavity having the desired shape finally we want so then they allow to solidify inside the cavity then uh, inside the mold so then we can get the required shape we need solidify okay then uh, in industry uh, various uh, metal melting method use the among these uh, various method we can identify the four main uh, methods uh, related to the casting operations uh, cupel operations electric arc furnaces and uh, induction type furnaces and the crucible type furnaces these things we are going to discuss in this lecture and also we are going to discuss uh, different casting operations okay the various type of casting operations uh, uh, use uh, in industry but uh, among these casting method we are going to discuss uh, common and widely using casting methods and also we are going to discuss uh, some uh, calculations basic calculations related to the casting operation in this lecture lecture series okay so let's continue to uh, the theory of this uh, theory under this topic metal casting okay okay uh, in this lecture we are going to discuss about the metal casting operations okay metal casting operation metal casting is a uh, one of the main and also the one of the uh, oldest manufacturing method used to manufacture uh, metal component so the knowledge about this uh, manufacturing method is very important the metal casting uh, uh, the let me explain what happened in the metal casting operation in a metal casting operation solid metal metal heated to become molten state by application of heat by applying heat the it is converted to a molten state molten state okay molten state this is the molten liquid uh, liquid metal then this liquid metal pours into a cavity pours into a cavity this the cavity having the uh, opposite shape of the required shape we want okay let's take uh, this kind of a simple uh, mold that i will explain uh, in detail about these things okay, let's it having uh, let's take this time this kind of a cavity this is the cavity area Okay. See the product uh, we are going to manufacture in this method. Casting method. Let's take. For example, let's take uh, this the cavity. Let's this the part in line the two half of mold the cope and drag part of the mold. Then this is the cavity area. Okay. 
this is the cavity area this is the cavity area this is the part uh, we want to we are going to manufacture this is the runner this is the this is called screw this is the total cavity area of the then this uh, motor metal they poured into a, this uh, cavity this motor metal poured to a cavity then what happened uh, this motor metal uh, goes to a cavity this uh, entire cavity area fills with the motor metal okay you can see this uh, this uh, motor metal fo flows into this cavity area then the cavity this cavity area fills with the uh, motor metal okay motor metal okay then it is allowed to solidify inside the mold it uh, depending on the size of the cavity area that means the size of the cavity area mean the depending on the volume and the surface area it take the time to solidify this uh, part inside the mold okay the so some casting may take the few days to completely solidify okay the very take if you take the large uh, casted component it take uh, some cast component take few days to solidify completely then uh, we have to give the solidification time then uh, what happened the after it solidify we can take out this part we can take out this part in a uh, sand casting we have to break the mold take out the part in the most of the cases we are break the mold to take out the part in some uh, die casting we are open the mold to take out the part okay die casting the mold make use in the steel like uh, material in the situation the we are op we can uh, open to take out the part so then uh, just after take out from the part you can see we are having this kind of uh, part all the runner system and the screws are attached to this uh, component Okay, so here yeah. you can see this is the screw and the runners uh, all attached to this uh, component, uh, all attached to this component. So then uh, in uh, most of the casting operations we can't get the exact dimensions so that uh, yeah. then uh, finishing operations finishing operations used to get the final dimensions for the part so that means we have to cut off this uh, runner system we have to cut off this uh, runner system and uh, we have to separate this uh, part we want the other part we want let's take after cut off and uh, reviewing impurities that we are having this kind of part the other final part uh, actually uh, we want this is the output from the casting operation. This is the part. Okay. Then you can see in this part, in the most of the cases, we can't obtain the exact dimension for the uh, in casting operations. Okay. We can't obtain the exact dimension in the casting operation because the due to the uneven shrinkage we can't predict the amount of shrinkage in the most of the cases and also the due, due to the uh, uh, obtained surface finish also very rough so certain uh, layer we have to remove from the we have to remove from the component to get the final required dimensions and the surface finish okay okay so that means we are manufacturing this component by giving certain allowances for the dimensions. Okay, that means we are giving some oversizes, oversized dimensions for the component for machining allowances and shrinkage allowances. Okay, so that means uh, let's take this is the final component we want, this is the dimension we want. That means final dimensions. To get this uh, final dimensions, what we are doing, the machine operations we are used to get the final dimensions. Okay, then, then you can see the very small amount of uh, material we have to remove to get the final dimensions. Very small layer we have to remove to get the final dimensions. 
that means the machining operations we are used to remove this uh, material to get the final dimensions and to obtain the required surface finish for the component because in the metal cast most of the metal casting operations especially in sand casting we can't obtain the uh, smooth surfaces in that situation we are doing the machine operations to get the, the surface finish okay then the finally this is the product uh, final product the manufactured in casting operation with the required dimensions and the surface finish okay Okay. Okay. This is called the cavity. Metal pouring. water metal pouring this is called the mold okay actually this is the operation in the metal casting operation in simply okay this is the operation uh, in metal casting very simply okay what happened the solid metal heated to become molten state by giving the heat okay by giving the heat then this is the liquid metal this is the liquid metal this liquid metal pours to a mold cavity this is the cavity this is the mold is the cavity and this mold cavity fills with the motor metal then we are given certain time to solidify inside the inside this cavity okay then after solidify this part then uh, we have taken now this uh, solidified part after it solidified this is the part just after taken out from the mold in uh, most of the cases in uh, especially in sand casting we have break the mold to take out the part okay but in some cases for example in a die casting we are not going to break the mold we are open because the mold is make use in the steel so we are open the mold to take out the part then again the mold can reuse but in sand casting the mold uh, can't reuse then uh, the, some material can you reuse that means the sand, sand we can reuse the mold have to make again for the new part okay but in uh, die casting the mold can reuse uh, mold is open to take the part then this is the just after taken out from the mold this is the part all the runner system all the risers are attached to this uh, component attached to this component then uh, we have to cut off the parting of operation we are used to remove this attached component runner system and the risers okay later i will explain what is mean by the risers and everything then uh, cut off operation just after cut off this is the uh, part then uh, actually we are then uh, just uh, taken out from the for example if it is a sand casting some uh, sand particles are also attached to this uh, surface so that uh, grinding operations we are used to remove this uh, attached uh, sand particles and impurities from the casted component okay so uh, then uh, the grinding and brushing operations we are used to remove these particles so then this just after the, doing this turn uh, we are having this kind of component but uh, dimensions are oversized that means we are manufacturing to uh, uh, this uh, dimensions because to get the final dimensions and the final uh, surface finish we are giving some elements for when uh, in casting operations okay that means uh, we are giving we are manufacturing this component to oversize that means uh, if it is you can see let's take this dimension as uh, d here it is d plus delta delta is the dimension allowances given for this uh, for these dimensions okay that means the machine allowances and the sinkage allowances then uh, that means this much of a layer we are removing to get the final dimensions to e dimensions then uh, while removing this uh, layer we can obtain the uh, smooth surfaces that means the required surface finish we can obtain and also the uh, required dimension tolerance we can obtain okay this is the finished product after casting operations okay these casting operations also can produce the uh, internal shapes also that means by using the core 
by using the co let me in uh, this kind of uh, by using this uh, this kind of co we can obtain the uh, internal shapes also okay internal shapes also okay later we can discuss in detail about this things okay this is the basically uh, these are the uh, this is the operation this is the basic operation in metal casting operation you can see it's a process it's a process uh heating metal uh, melting operation the actually this uh, process uh, is a combination of uh, unit operations it having this uh, various uh, unit operations you can see the metal melting operation is a unit operation okay metal melting operation okay then you can see the mold making operation before mold making operation the pattern have to make pattern pattern have to make the pattern mean uh, this is uh, to create this cavity we are using this uh, pattern that mean we are for, for example if you are using the sand casting we are compacting sand around this pattern to make this cavity area this is called the pattern okay pattern then the pattern making is a another unit operation that mean if there is a co the co making also a unit operation if there is a co we need to generate the internal features we need the co we need the co call the co this uh, co making also a another unit operation then the assembling the mold another operation another operation belongs to the casting process assembling the mold and the co then the uh, metal pouring the pouring also a another unit operation in this metal casting operation metal uh, motor metal pouring because it, it also having the certain calculations uh, regarding the model uh, pouring of model metal so then uh, allow to solidify then uh, mold take out from the uh, the casted component take out from the mold also another operation that in mold break in operation mold shake out break to take out the part then the uh, grinding and uh, parting of operations that mean uh, removing this impurities attached to this uh, surfaces and also the removing this uh, uh, runner system and the risers attached to this component is a uh, another unit operation okay then uh, machining operations to get the final dimensions and the surface finish another uh, set of unit operations needed okay the actual this uh, casting process is a combination of uh, various uh, unit operations combination of various unit operations okay then uh, in this lecture we are going to discuss in detail about these things uh, about this uh, unit operations we are going to discuss okay then what are the calculations regarding this unit operation we are also we are going to discuss okay this is the basic in introduction for the casting operations okay okay this uh, casting operation having the unit operations unit operation involving the in this process uh, unit operations uh, in a casting operation casting process so what are the unit operations first one uh, the main uh, unit operation we can uh, call the metal melting metal melting operations metal melting operations uh, we can identify the one of the main uh, operations belongs to the this process the metal melting uh, various uh, melting method used in the industry the but uh, we are going to discuss the uh, main methods uh, four main methods uh, few polar electric arc furnace induction furnace and the crucible type furnaces and the second uh, unit operation main unit operation the mold making Okay. the mold making is a the various uh, uh, that is depend on the uh, type of casting that mean the sand casting die casting depend on this uh, type of casting the mold making operation is uh, various but uh, in generally in a sand casting i will uh, it also in the combination of several operations uh, sand preparation
For example, if it is in sand casting, it also has the several uh, pattern making. co-making then assembly assembly the uh, component so mold making everything then uh, third uh, operation we can uh, identify the mold metal pouring now the main operations this uh, process so then the fourth operation solidification then the fifth operation uh, the finishing operations the finishing operations uh, uh, machine in and inspections the machine in and inspe inspections so that means the machine operations are uh, done to get the final dimensions and the shapes I explained and the inspection also, also done uh, to identify whether the uh, part due uh, whether there is a thermal crack or porosities are present that means uh, inspection uh, in uh, most of the cases in the casting operation the thermal crack may possible if there's a thermal crack because of the undimensioned in case the thermal crack uh, can generate in uh, casting it is totally cannot avoid then uh, what happens if there's a crack if there's a crack what happens there's a the strength weaken strength weaken one of the uh, strength weaken and also the porosity the porosity means the air bubble trapped inside the uh, casted component the, that, that also cannot uh, totally avoid in a metal casting operation there is a possibility to, to trap the air bubble inside this uh, casting what happens if there is a air bubble inside the casting it also causes to weaken the uh, mechanical properties the strength toughness can weaken so that uh, inspection is needed the x-ray taking the x-ray and also the uh, non destructive testing uh, like uh, uh, are used to uh, inspect this component in casting operations okay okay then uh, we are going to discuss about the uh, then what are the component manufactured using this uh, casting operations especially the, what are, what can you what are the example component manufactured using this uh, casting operations Okay, what are the component? What are the component manufactured using the casting operations? The component manufactured using the casting operations, so we can say the every metal component, every metal component having certain casting stage. When it finishes as a product. Every metal component having certain casting stage in uh, when it finishes as a product. Okay. The every metal component that means uh, every metal component having the certain casting stage for example you may think uh, if you take the heat metal it uh, actually the we can't see the uh, if you take the you may surprise how what is the casting in a sheet metal manufacturing actually it's a uh, initial billet is manufactured using the continuous casting operations initial billet for example, if you take the sheet metal, you may think uh, how it is manufactured using the casting operation. Sheet metals are not uh, manufactured, uh, that means directly it's not a casted component, it's not a direct casted component, but the billet used to manufacture this uh, sheet metal is manufactured using the continuous casting operations. That means this kind of billet is used. Then this uh, billet is uh, passes through the set of rollers, set of uh, rollers, personally rotating rollers, to, in order to reduce the thickness of the heat metal. Okay. Then the, finally we are having this uh, this kind of sheet metal. This passes through the set of rollers, set of rollers to get the required thickness for the sheet metal. 
that means here you can see this is the product this uh, billet is manufactured using the casting casting operations it mean the in you may think uh, how sheet metal is manufactured with the casting but this is not a direct casted uh, component sheet metal is not direct casted component but it having certain casting stage continuous casting stage it having when it uh, in its manufacture okay that means this billet is manufactured using the cast, continuous casting operation then it passes through the rolling operation to get the uh, thickness for the sheet metal that means every metal component every metal component having certain casting stage when it manufactured but uh, direct casted component we can identify i will give you some examples of the direct casted component okay direct casted component what are the direct casted component for example uh, the most of the component are uh, direct casted component the, for example engine block okay then uh, fly wheels fly wheels then the pulleys the engine cover plates okay the uh, the machine uh, frame structures for example lead bed L lead bed then the component of the lead machine the most of the most of the component of the lead machines are casted component okay head stock tail stock component a cast component the milling machine frame structure the ship hull the cast the various uh, cast component we can identify the various uh, sizes from a few grams to the maybe a tonnage okay maybe a tonnage uh, weight if you take the sheep hull you can see think imagine how large then uh, how much of the mass contain then and, and also the from the small component to the very large component are casted okay this are the example uh, component manufactured in the direct casted component I mean the main manufacturing method is uh, casting operation to manufacture this uh, direct casted component engine block uh, flywheels the police engine cover plates lathe medium uh, lathe, uh, most of the lathe component lathe bed and uh, lathe uh, component other component also manufactured using the casting operation the milling machine uh, component uh, sheep hull these are direct casted component but uh, every metal component but every metal component has certain casting stage for example if you take the sheet metal it's not a direct casted component it's a rolling product roll rolling uh, uh, product metal rolling product but it having the certain casting stage when it finishes as a product that mean initial uh, work piece that mean the initial billet is manufactured using the continuous casting operation then it is passes to the set of rollers oppositely rotating rollers to reduce the thickness of the oppositely rotating rollers to reduce the thickness of the billet then we have in the sheet metal okay this is the about the uh, component manufactured using the casting operation so then uh, what are the advantages then we have to discuss the uh, advantages and the disadvantages in this uh, casting operations what are the advantages and the disadvantages in this casting operations advantages and disadvantages
fasting process what are the uh, advantages advantages so as the advantages uh, the main advantages uh, you can identify the complex geometries complex geometries can manufacture easily complex geometries can manufacture easily complex geometries what are the complex geometries for example example think about the complexity of the engine block I think you all have seen this engine block that's why I took this example the engine block the you take the engine block uh, it's a the various uh, the engine block uh, it's a very complex very complex uh, is the main uh, uh, structural component of the engine the whole other component attached to this uh, engine block the, it has to give support uh, flanges to most of the component it's a very complex it's a hollow and also the hollow structure hollow a uh, lot of a uh, lot of holes and uh, very complex think how difficult it uh, going to manufacture using uh, machine in operations okay think how complex city we need going to manufacture using the machine in operations it take longer time to manufacture these uh, different uh, complex geometries okay it take a long, longer time and also the specific machine tools are used have to use a specific machine tool have to use to generate this kind of complex geometries so that but in uh, metal casting operation we can easily manufacture we can easily manufacture this kind of complex geometries in a uh, higher with the with a higher production rate and also with minimum wastage of material that is uh, one of the main advantage in uh, metal casting operations the second main advantage is a little wastage of material a okay, little wastage of material uh, very little wastage of material in this uh, casting process uh, but if you take the any other machine uh, manufacturing method like uh, uh, like uh, machine operations if you take the machine operations we are removing unwanted material to get the final dimensions in the shape that means entire uh, removing material wasted entire removing material wasted but in this situation what happened we are pouring this mold metal to a mold cavity that having the opposite shape of the required shape so then there are no actually the no material wasted very small material only very small material wasted that means you can see Let's take this is the component we are going to manufacture. This is the riser. This is the pouring screw. This is the pouring screw. Then uh, only this uh, material we have to remove after the caster. That means we have to part of this uh, component. Then we have to remove this one and also we have to remove this one only uh, these two is uh, removing from the part we are manufacturing but this component we can reuse in this process also okay the, we, that means this part also we can remelt and we can use in a next operation so that uh, actually the no uh, very little wastage of material uh, because of the grinding and uh, finishing operations and the machine operations so then uh, very little wastage of material that is one of the advantage main advantage in uh, metal casting operations then another main advantage is uh, isotropic properties the isotropic uh, properties of mechanical uh, properties it can give the 
uh, isotropic properties for the uh, mechanical for the mechanical properties that mean in all direction the same properties uh, we can obtain that mean the, if we take the strength for example one of the uh, mechanical property if you take the these are the casted component there's no because uh, how it produces the isotropic property there's no uh, pattern of uh, grain arrangement grain flow pattern there's no grain flow pattern okay so that it can give the same value if this is the ultimate strength in this direction same ultimate strength in a, a transverse direction also isotropic properties for the mechanical properties but uh, if you take the forge component or roll component the grains are arranged to a certain direction grain star let's take this is the grain arrangement direction in this direction the strength uh, one strength in this direction having the another uh, strength but in this situation f1 is greater than f2 you can see in a another direction it is weakened uh, in another direction it is strength strengthening but uh, it's not isotropic property in a if you take the forge component or roll component but um, apart manufacturing the casting operation it have the isotropic properties in all directions okay uh, another main uh, advantage in uh, metal casting operation then uh, another advantage is uh, can manufacture large component can manufacture both can manufacture can manufacture a large component for example uh, sheep hull is a, the largest com uh, component manufactured in this uh, casting operation is sheep hull think how the big these are sheep hulls these are manufactured using the casting operation and also the uh, machine frame structures think about the lathe bed very uh, large lathe machine lathe bed this uh, is, is manufactured using the uh, casting operation okay the any other uh, manufacturing methods are cannot use to manufacture this kind of large component okay this is impossible so then uh, production rate uh, then uh, then uh, another advantage the production rate is high compared to the uh, machine operations it has the highest uh, higher production rate for, because uh, it can easily generate the internal and external complex geometries easily so that uh, at once it can create all the features so that the production rate is very high in metal casting operations okay another advantage in uh, these are the main advantage in this uh, casting process okay main advantage is in this uh, casting process then what are the disadvantages in this process? Every uh, process time the disadvantages, what are the disadvantages? What are the disadvantages in this process? The main disadvantage is uh, limitations in uh, mechanical properties. Limitations in mechanical properties mean uh, in this uh, meaning is the strength and the toughness uh, the actually the expected strength and the toughness that mean the mechanical properties we can uh, in a some situation we can obtain in metal casting operation because due to the porosity porosity and the thermal cracks especially thermal cracks because of uh, the in a metal casting operation we can totally avoid this uh, porosity and the thermal cracks okay in a uh, uh, we can totally avoid we can uh, totally avoid this uh, presence of uh, porosity and the thermal crack because of the porosity and the thermal crack the expected strength we can't obtain expected sorry expected 
mechanical properties we can't obtain that means strength toughness like properties we can't uh, obtain because of the presence of procedural thermal cryo because in this metal casting cast in operations we can totally we can't totally avoid this porosity and the thermal cry so that the expected strength we can obtain from the product one of the, the main disadvantage in this process secondly in the most of the cast in operations dimensional accuracy and the surface finish is poor okay uh, the most of the cast in operations the dimensional accuracy and the surface finish is poor especially in a uh, sand casting is the main uh, casting uh, method sand casting in sand casting we can't obtain the uh, smooth surfaces we can't obtain the uh, exact dimensions okay essentially we need the uh, machine operations to get the surface means and the uh, required surface means and the uh, dimensions then that mean uh, because of the oxidation and also the because of the uh, wall of the mold we can't obtain the uh, dimensions and the surface means that mean we are giving certain allowances for the machine and also the shrinkage that is the one of the disadvantage advantage in the uh, casting operations but in some casting operations some casting methods that mean especially investment casting die casting and the permanent mold casting can generate the smooth surfaces and also uh, uh, close tolerances dimensional tolerances we can obtain in this uh, some casting method okay then the thirdly the process is safety hazard process the process is very safety hazard process dealing with the molten metal is a very safety hazard process lot of accidents happen in uh, casting industry when dealing with the molten metal that is very uh, risky and safety hazard process Uh, these are the disadvantage in uh, metal casting operations okay okay uh, then uh, next we are going to discuss the one of the main uh, unit operation in metal casting operations one of the main uh, unit operation in uh, metal casting operations the first we are going to discuss this uh, main uh, unit operation metal melting methods okay metal melting methods in uh, metal melting methods uh, we can identify the four uh, main uh, metal melting method okay uh, for the metal melting operations the various type of furnaces are used in industry but uh, okay among this uh, method uh, we can identify the four main uh, methods So we are going to discuss these uh, four main methods. Uh, first one, cube polar furnace. <coughs> cube polar furnaces. Then the second one, electric cap furnace. electric cap furnaces the third one induction furnaces the fourth one uh, fourth one is called uh, crucible crucible type furnaces okay crucible type furnaces in industry various type of furnaces are, are there but uh, we are going to discuss on these four because these four is the main uh, method used to melt the molten metal the cube polar electric cap furnace induction type furnace and the crucible type furnaces the cube polar the is a is a combustion the heat is generated using the combustion the coke 
the electric arc furnace use the electricity uh, to generate the heat and also the induction furnace also use electricity to produce the heat that means the induction heat is used in this induction type furnaces and the crucible type furnaces use the uh, combustion of uh, liquid fuel that means the furnace oil and the kerosene diesel like uh, fuel is used to uh, melt the uh, metals well let's uh, discuss in detail about this uh, the four method we have first we are going to discuss about the cupola furnaces okay first we are going to discuss about the cupola furnace okay cupola furnace the cupola are mostly used to melt the cast iron uh, other metals also can uh, melt uh, like the aluminium brass uh, copper like metals also can uh, melt using this cupola but mostly used for melt the cast iron okay mostly used to melt the cast iron because uh, the uh, normally the cast iron having the uh, 3 to 4% uh, of carbon uh, because uh, in cupola operation the when melting the ferrous metal the, there's no method to control the carbon percentage because uh, this uh, mortar metal directly contact with the burning fuel coke then what happened in this uh, with higher temperature what happened this uh, carbon atom diffuse into the motor metal then this uh, carbon percentage is uh, goes to the 3 to 4 percent in this uh, cupola operation uh, saturation limit uh, 3, 3 to 4 percent uh, that means the cast iron uh, output is the cast iron okay then uh, i'll draw the the diagram of a uh, cupola the it having the vertical column shape structure actually the it having the steel housing the steel housing steel housing then uh, inner it having the uh, fire brick layer inner it having the fire brick layer You know it having the fire brick layer, I'll draw the fire brick layer in this color. The clay and the fire brick layer. The structure is the vertical uh, cylindrical column shape structure it having. Fibric layer and the clay, clay, clay layer. So then uh, it having the open uh, uh, bottom. This uh, bottom, there's a door. Can this uh, door can open? This the uh, bottom door. When it uh, cleaning, this uh, door can uh, drop. It's called the drop bottom. Drop bottom. That uh, door can open when. Uh, when uh, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> then uh, it having the sand uh, at the bottom, the sand. Okay, sand bottom. Then. Uh, 
Den, uh, the tapping is good. Tapping is good. This is the we are the motor metal taken out. This we are the motor metal is taken out. Then the slag is good. The slag is taken out from this end. It's a slag is good is uh, higher than the tapping is good because uh, slag is uh, floating on this uh, motor metal. Reflect the air, then the slug is good. The ash, uh, and also the pressing uh, oxides, ash, and also the impurities are taken out from this slug is good. Then, uh, then, then also, I can yeah, there's a hole, there's a hole uh, in here. This will be a hole. Then the air belt. Air belt somewhere in here. Then the blower. Electric blower. And the two years. Yeah, inlets. Then, uh, then this is uh, fills with the sorry sand uh, bottom having the, this kind of uh, this kind of uh, inclination sand bottom. Yeah. Then this is uh, fills with the. Hole. Okay. And, uh, this is uh, the hope. Then uh, it is filled with the metal, the big iron, uh, metal scrap. Then the flux. Then the flux, the, as the flux, the calcium carbonate is used as the flux, calcium carbonate. Then again, the uh, coke layer, the coke layer, whole layer is there. Then again, the uh, metal scrap and the Big gun. Then uh, again the flux. This is how it is built. The cupola, the layer wise. Okay, layer wise. It is built with the layer wise. Then this is the charging door. This is the charging door. This is the charging stage. Stage. Then this is the charging door. Okay. This is uh, at the top. It is charging while operating the cupola. Charging door, the steel housing. Steel cylinder, then the air built. The blower. Blower. Then these uh, layers, uh, what are these layers? This layer is the flux. The Actually the flux is used to uh, purify the motor metal. Flux is used to purify the motor metal. In this uh, process, the calcium carbonate is used as the flux. It can convert uh, ferrous oxide to a ferrous. The sand bottom, then uh, Tapping is good. It's like this word. I built a flux uh, metal. Then you notice here. 
the steel uh, cylinder is uh, normally having the 6 uh, millimeter thickness then the uh, refactory layer uh, that means the fire bricks and the clay layer is used uh, for the inner layer fire bricks and the uh, clay fire bricks and the clay layer uh, inside this uh, inside to this uh, steel uh, shell this is the uh, the cube structure of the cube polar this is how it feels with the cube polar then the sand bottom then this is uh, where the motor metal is taken out this called through the tapping squirt the at this uh, this is the combustion region the later i will explain in detail about this uh, combustion region is the combustion region starting from the top of the uh, air inlet and uh, to a certain height uh, around the 15 to 30 centimeter height the combustion region then the in this region uh, is called uh, reducing region then this is called the melting region the melting region uh, melting region and then the preheating region up to the charging dome this is, uh, actually the four different region we can identify this uh, four different main region we can identify called the combustion region and the reducing region melting region melting zone and the preheating zone these are the four zones uh, we can identify in the cupola operations the later i will explain in detail about these things uh, then the water metal taken out from this uh, tapping squirt to the ladle called uh, this uh, this kind of uh, container is called ladle it also having the refect relay inside it then the uh, motor metal taken out from the ladle then it is taken to a pouring area for the pouring this is the typical structure of the cupola then you can see the always the uh, motor metal directly contact with the burning fuel uh, coke so that uh, what happened the motor metal the, this uh, carbon atoms easily can diffuse into a uh, motor metal then the motor metal carbon percentage increases to a 4 percent then uh, output is cast iron output is the cast iron okay then in this uh, process uh, we can identify the four different uh, regions i will explain this uh, four different regions in detail i will draw the clear diagram the air inlet air inlet from the called the uh, air inlet uh, holes two years so then uh, then this is the combustion region coal yeah inlet then this is the uh, coke region then the uh, then the uh, next uh, metal metal region okay. the next uh, flux okay then the four different regions we can identify starting from the uh, preheating zone sorry uh, starting from the air inlet uh, top of the air inlet to the uh, certain height in this uh, coke bed around uh, 15 to 30 centimeter this region is called uh, com uh, combustion region combustion zone Combustion zone. Okay. Then uh, the this ending point of the 
upper point of the combustion zone to the upper level of the coke bed okay ending point of the combustion zone to the upper level of the coke bed is called reducing zone reducing zone okay reducing zone then uh, next one the melting zone okay then uh, this region is uh, called uh, melting zone melting zone the, where the motor metals are uh, molten where the motor metals are molten is called uh, melting zone then again the next uh, coke bed is ending from the next uh, coke bed melting zone is ending from the next coke bed then uh, various operations uh, various uh, chemical operations uh, happened on this uh, in this uh, region then uh, uh, the then uh, this is uh, in this region is called preheating region up to the top of the uh, this uh, the, the containing uh, material called the preheating zone okay preheating zone preheating zone up to uh, this height okay preheating zone this is uh, how the four different uh, regions are separating okay this region uh, top of the air inlet to the uh, around the 15 to 30 centimeter height the combustion region actually the combustion is taken place in this region the very high temperature around the 1500 centigrade to 1800 centigrade there okay around 1800 centigrade there then uh, reducing region ending point of the combustion to the total height of the coke bed is called the reducing region okay reducing region then the starting from the ending point of the coke bed to the uh, next uh, coke layer this region is called melting zone this the where yeah, this is the molten metals are uh, molten this uh, called the melting zone then uh, up to uh, top from that uh, ending point of the melting zone is called the preheating zone then the various uh, chemical operations are uh, happened in this uh, region so what happened in uh, uh, what happened in uh, combustion region combustion region the what happened in combustion zone in combustion zone what happened the C carbon plus O2 produce the CO2 plus heat okay this is the main operation in the combustion region this is the main operation in combustion region then the these are the minor operations silicon plus o2 produce the silicon dioxide plus uh, less amount of heat then the manganese manganese plus o2 produce the manganese oxide plus heat these are the four uh, main operations uh, in a combustion region the the combustion uh, zone is height about the four, uh, 15 to 30 centimeter in normal height then uh, around the produce the 1500 centigrade to 1000 the 800 centigrade in this combustion region okay then uh, again the ending point of the uh, combustion zone to the top of the coal bed height to call the reducing zone reducing zone what happened in reducing zone the 
produce CO2 react with the carbon existing carbon and produce the, the carbon monoxide carbon monoxide and the heat okay in this uh, reducing zone in this reducing zone then the around the temperature around the 1400 centigrade to 1200 centigrade that means you can see the temperature reduces then uh, next one the melting zone okay melting zone the what happened in this region the molten metal uh, produced that mean uh, solid metal the molten again another chemical reactions are uh, generated that means the ferrous oxide converted to into a ferrous by reacting with the carbon monoxide that's why uh, that mean two ferrous plus three co2 the we need the more carbon monoxide the carbon monoxide uh, to produce the more carbon monoxide the calcium carbon is uh, produce the uh, calcium oxide plus co2 the co2 react with the carbon co2 react with the carbon and it produces this carbon monoxide for this operation this is the main uh, chemical reaction we want that means to convert the ferrous oxide to a ferrous we want this reaction that's why we are using this ca calcium carbonate as the purification agent to produce the carbon dioxide in this combustion process and to react with the coal and produce the carbon monoxide for this operation the melting zone then the preheating zone uh, the preheat entire uh, charge material to get the to uh, to reach these uh, operations okay this is called the cupola operation this is called the cupola operation it produces the cast iron uh, in this operation Okay, today here we discuss about the uh, basics about the, uh, I gave, first I gave introduction about the metal casting operation. Then uh, we discuss uh, advantages and disadvantages of this casting operations. And also the, and also we discuss about the metal melting method, one of the metal melting method, the cupola furnace operations. Okay, uh, let's continue on next day class, we are going to discuss the, Further, we are going to discuss in detail about these uh, furnaces and uh, calculations regarding this uh, metal melting operations in next day class. Okay.